Hello everybody, Happy New Year! We're going to start this year off right with music history for January 1st. The Billboard magazine published its very first record sales chart in 1936. The first number one was Joe Venuti's Stop, Look, Listen. The very first FM radio station in the world was licensed in 1940. New York's W2XDG, which broadcasts from the Empire State Building, first broadcast with the new FM technology. Sam Phillips, a very famous disc jockey, who was 26 in 1950, on New Year's Day opened his new Memphis recording service, later to become known as Sun Studios in Memphis, Tennessee. It was located at the corner of Union and Marshall. The very famous song, Rock Around the Clock, went to number one on the UK Singles Chart in 1956 for the second time. The single is often cited as the biggest selling vinyl rock and roll music single of all times, with sales reaching over 25 million. In 1956, Carl Perkins released his music, Blue Suede Shoes, on New Year's Day. It was later famous with the singer Elvis Presley. Speaking of Elvis Presley, while on furlough from the Army in 1959, Elvis took his brand new BMW out for a drive on Germany's famous Autobahn Highway. Elvis ended up totaling the BMW, but he was fortunate enough to be able to walk away from the crash with no scratches. Country star Johnny Cash played a free concert for the inmates of San Quentin Prison in California in 1959. One of those in the audience was 19-year-old Merle Haggard. Merle was in the midst of a 15-year prison sentence for a grand theft auto and armed robbery. Merle only served three of the 15-year sentence. The teenagers and the dance scene was never the same back in 1959 on New Year's Day. ABC premiered the first teen dance television show entitled American Bandstand. This show led the U.S. in daytime television ratings. The Beatles auditioned for Decca Records in West, Hampton, West Hampstead, London in 1962. The Beatles still had their famous drummer Pete Best, and they performed their very first major label audition. Decca A&R man Dick Rowe, in an infamous move, passes on signing them. Rowe's reasoning for the move, as he tells Beatles manager Brian Epstein, guitar groups are on the way out. Guess we know the moral of that one. Don't be a dick. The Beach Boys recorded Fun, Fun, Fun in 1964. And in 1966, the group Simon and Garfunkel started a two-week run at number one on the U.S. Singles Music Chart with The Sound of Silence. In 1967, The Doors made their first live television appearance, lip-syncing their first single, Break On Through, on KTLA-TV Channel 5 in Los Angeles. The single peaked at number 126 on the U.S. chart, and this was mainly due to a lack of airplay after censors objected to the drug use implied by the line, She Gets High, which is repeated in the middle section of the song. In 1968, Billboard magazine reported that for the first time, music albums had outsold music singles in the U.S., with album sales reaching over 192 million. Radio Luxembourg aired over seven hours of continuous Beatles music in 1971 to celebrate the group's 10th year in the music business. Every track played was either a single or an LP track of The Beatles plus tracks from solo albums. U.S. singer Carole King started a three-week run at number one on the U.S. music album chart in 1972 with music. This would become her second U.S. number one. On New Year's Day in 1972, the annual Tournament of Roses Parade allowed its very first rock group on a float. This day they welcomed in Three Dog Night. And as they say, all good things must come to an end. In 1982, the Swedish group ABBA played their final show as a group in Stockholm, Sweden. Back in the United States, 
on New Year's Day, Prince played an after midnight New Year's Eve charity gig in 1988 for the homeless in Minnesota. Joining Prince on stage was the fantastic Miles Davis. Nirvana in 1989 signed a one year recording contract with Sub Pop Records. The Seattle based label became begin not as a record label but as a fanzine called Subterranean Pop in the early 1980s and they also signed the bands Soundgarden and Mudhoney. The new radio station in Florida, WKRL, played the Led Zeppelin music track Stairway to Heaven for 24 hours in 1990. This was part of a prelude to an all Zeppelin format. On New Year's Day in 1992, country music singer Dwight Yoakam fell off his horse in the middle of the Tournament of Roses parade in Pasadena, California. His saddle broke, but not to worry, someone from the crowd came forward and repaired his saddle. And as they say, Dwight was back in the saddle again and continued to ride. Elton John's new single, The Last Song, hits the top 40 in 1993. This gave him an unbroken record-setting string of consecutive years with a chart hit, 23. He surpassed Elvis Presley's old record of 22. Country singer Faith Hill went to number one on the Billboard Country Music single chart in 1994 with the single Wild One. This would be the first of many hits for, for country singer Faith Hill. Keeping it country, singer-songwriter Jamie Johnson moved to Nashville in 2000. This was a time when there were many fears about the Y2K computer glitches and all the world Excuse me, all the world was coming to an abrupt stop with the computer movement. Jamie was quoted as saying, if the world is going to hell, I'm going to Nashville to write about it. Tim McGraw brought in 2000 with Last Dollar Fly Away. This video was the first one to debut on the country music television channel in the new year of 2000. Also in 2000, Queen beat the Beatles to be crowned the greatest British band of all time by BBC Radio to listeners in the UK. With over 20,000 listeners voting by either email, phone, or text, Queen not only beat the Beatles, but they also took on the Rolling Stones, Oasis, and Take That, and topped them all. Bands were voted on songwriting, lyrics, live performances, originality, and showmanship. Country music star Jimmy Wayne began a 1,700 mile walk in 18 degree weather in the year 2010. He walked from Nashville to Phoenix to raise attention to homelessness in, with the teens. Shania Twain married in 2011 in Puerto Rico. She married Frederick Thibode. Also in 2011, another country singer, Kelly Picker, married songwriter Kyle Jacobs in the Caribbean. Kyle was the co-author of Garth Brooks More Than a Memory. He tried but he couldn't do it. In the year 2011 Chuck Berry had to cut short a concert at Congress Theater in Chicago, Illinois after collapsing on the stage into the, with a little over an hour into the show. Berry slumped over a keyboard and did not move for a couple of minutes before being helped off stage. He returned 15 minutes later, only to be forced off again immediately. The 84-year-old later re-emerged on stage but told fans he had no strength to continue performing. And now music fans, it's time to say happy birthday to the people that brought us great music or had their hand involved in creating music for all of us. Those born today on January 1st are Joe McDonald. He was born in 1942. Joe was the vocals for the band Country Joe and the Fish. They had a U.S. hit in 1968, I Feel Like I'm Fixin' to Die. And in 1950, Morgan Fisher was born. Morgan was a keyboardist with Mott the Hoople. In 1972, the band had a number three on the U.K. music chart and a number 37 in the U.S. with the music single All the Young Dudes. This was a song that the great David Bowie offered the band when he heard they were about to break up. That's your music history. Today is January 1st. 
And in the words of the famed DJ Casey Kaysen, great man, great guy, he was always fun to listen to. Keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars. Thank you.